Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Giza 581, a star system that became really popular back in 2010 when we discovered this star and its exoplanets and then something happened and it actually became just another star, it wasn't as exciting anymore. Let's find out why in this video and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the year is 2010 and possibly even a little bit earlier than that and NASA announces the news of a discovery of an Earth-like planet in the habitable zone of Gliese 581. I believe it was actually this one right here. It was an Earth-like planet in the area where we would expect it to have liquid water. It was very very Earth-like, maybe about two to three masses of Earth and um, Radius wise it was very uh, similar to Earth as well. So in other words, it probably had a little bit more gravity here But in every other respect, this was kind of like a potentially Earth-like planet that was only about 20 light years away from us Obviously this back then created a lot of excitement People started imagining things started asking questions about it and there was obviously a lot of speculation about life here and maybe even extraterrestrial intelligent life. So all of this was kind of new and exciting. Since then something happened and actually just a few years after this discovery, another group of scientists and specifically actually two groups of scientists started studying the system again. And they realized something that we are going to be dealing with for a long time from now on. That due to the nature of data and statistical data specifically, sometimes we actually find things that are not really there. And as a matter of fact, having studied the data from the star quite extensively, most of the scientists today think that it doesn't have this many planets. Right now, if this is actually the older simulation, if we look at this system, you'll see that there is actually a lot of planets, possibly even five or even six planets. But it seems that we have, can only confirm three and none of them are actually in the habitable zone. Actually, the planets that we could confirm are right here, very close to the star in the super, super hot zone. That doesn't really have a better name for it. Now, I'm going to go to Space Engine and show you what uh, we can simulate there. And we're going to start right here on our beautiful planet Earth. I'm going to have this dramatic shot where I open up with the Earth and then we're going to go to Gliese 581. So, the two planets G and I believe D are actually unconfirmed. As a matter of fact, most people today think that they don't really exist. Let's type the name of the star and basically point at it just to see where it is even located. And it's actually right there. So let's actually just make this a little bit better for a second and and so we can kind of see that it's at a distance of about 20.25 light years away from us the system diameter is about 0.16 astronomical units and uh the mass of the star is about 31 percent of the mass of our own sun it would require a telescope to actually see because it's an m type star in other words it's a type of a red dwarf and as all other red dwarfs go it's probably very active flare wise and it probably produces quite a lot of various types of um, super highly energetic uh, emissions in other words super flares which are not very good for life but we're not going to talk about that we're actually going to go and check out the star in real life in other words space engines so let's click on g and go to the system and explore the planets as they are created in Space Engine and these are actually a little bit more realistic than they are in Universe Sandbox right now. So there's actually three planets that we've confirmed officially. Three of them are known as uh, B, C and E and they're all a lot more massive than our Earth. So this is the star itself, this is the Red Dwarf and I'm just going to accelerate time a little bit just to show you what all of this looks like. Very beautiful star but probably very very active and produces a tremendous amount of energy because Red dwarfs are just like that. They're not very big, but they do create a lot of energy. And there are our planets. You can see them orbiting around this beautiful star. So these planets, as you can imagine, were not really detected by looking at the shadow 
in front of the star. They were detected through a statistical analysis of the variation in the motion of the star, because as they move around the star, they actually kind of make it wobble up, down, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, left, right. And so this is actually what we call a radial velocity uh, measurements, because they're orbiting this way. Now, because of this, it's kind of possible for us to maybe even look at them and see them directly, because sometimes they'll be passing um, in front of other stars, and we might even be able to detect their atmosphere that way, but that's all in the future. For now, though, we only have the speculation about them and their orbits and their existence, although these three are almost certainly confirmed. Now let's go to the first one here, and this is actually the one that's um, known as E. It's about 1.7 uh, to possibly four-ish masses of uh, Earth, although officially, as of now, it stands at about 1.7, so maybe this is actually the wrong amount. But it is a kind of a hot desert, or desertic in this case, Super Terra. Let's slow down time just so we can see its surface a little bit better and come closer to it so we can actually see what's going on here. So basically think of this as like Venus with a lot more desert stuff on it. So it's super, super hot, probably even hotter than Venus, and the temperatures here are over 500 degrees Celsius. Not a place that we'll probably consider home ever, but definitely a place that I would like to see myself one day. Nothing really special about this planet other than it's orbiting relatively close to the star, so we might uh, think that there's probably no atmosphere here, because most of it was stripped by the powerful super flares from the star that's right there. Alright, well that's number one. Number two is a lot more interesting, at least in Space Engine. It's known as a warm Super Neptune. Isn't that a cool name? A warm Super Neptune. So I'm going to be calling my friends that, especially if they're nice to me. Anyway, so this is what it looks like in Space Engine. And as you can imagine, this is actually a kind of a um, ice giant. It's about 15.8 masses of, the, um, of Earth, although in this simulation it's about 36 masses of Earth. And what we know about it is that it orbits a little bit farther away, but actually in the area of uh, orbit that might give it some kind of a slightly warmer temperature. And in this simulation, it's actually at 34 degrees Celsius. Very comfortable 34 degrees Celsius. And even though it's still really, really close to the actual parent star, because this is a red dwarf, it's uh, obviously doesn't really get as hot here because a red dwarf doesn't produce as much heat as our own sun. And so this beautiful object, this beautiful ice giant, looks absolutely incredible. Uh, probably one of the more beautiful ice giants I've seen in Space Engine. And the last object here is known as... Oh, by the way, this is Gliese 581b, and the last object is known as Gliese 58c. Now, in real life, this planet is about 5.5 masses of Earth, and here in Space Engine, it's about 12.5 masses of Earth. And it looks actually just as beautiful as the previous planet, but it's kind of interesting in how it's defined as a cool mini Jupiter. That's that's going to be my nickname too. I'm, I'm a cool mini Jupiter. Mostly because I'm not very tall. Anyway, so this is actually yet another very beautiful planet. And um, as you can see, also discovered by radial velocity back in 2007, although announced a little bit later than that. And these three planets um, are essentially what we definitely believe exists around Gliese 581, but nothing else. And this is why this planet, even though it was in the news back a few years ago, is no longer in the news, because now we don't really think there's anything habitable here. We don't really think that any of these planets that you'll see orbiting around the star in a few seconds as I move out of the here, I wouldn't really think any of these planets are worthy considering for any kind of potential habitation, exploration, or life. Unless, of course, they have moons. And because this last planet is sort of in a region that might be a little bit closer to the habitable zone, uh, we think that maybe just maybe there might be something going on here. And on the other hand, if we can confirm the other two planets, then they also will show us that, well... Maybe we're, we were either wrong about um, reconsidering their existence, or maybe just maybe we have to recalculate how we uh, find and discover these planets using radial velocity, because this is still a new technique and we're still learning how to actually make it work. 
But the real reason I actually wanted to make this video is just to show you that uh, even though we might hear about new discoveries of new planets and new stars with planets, it's very likely that in the next few years those discoveries might actually disappear just like Gliese 581G and end up being a statistical error. There's always an error when it comes to statistics and especially when you're looking at objects so far away from us that we're basically are kind of guessing things here. So these uh, planets and these stars are so far away from us that we're looking at uh, the minuscule changes in data that sometimes end up just being errors. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you. I wanted to talk about Gliese 581, also known as Wolf 562, also known as HIP 74995, and kind of tell you why you probably are not going to be hearing about this star anytime soon until maybe just maybe we rediscover or re-rediscover the planet that was in the habitable zone here. Anyway, let's escape here. Let's go back home and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.